Hey everybody, this is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarland DC Multiverse Collector's Edition Detective Comics Red Hood. Now, when you hear Red Hood, you think Jason Todd, but this is the original Red Hood. This is the one that turned into the Joker. Before the Joker, he did a criminal act as a Red Hood, fell into a fat of chemicals, and became the Joker. I printed this guy for the McFarland Toy Store, utilized the bundle discount and coupon code, and even after shipping taxes, got these guys for less than retail. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see the top, 22 moon parts. McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus. DC Multiverse Red Hood, Collector's Edition. Here he is in the package. He has a knife, a little pickaxe, crossbow, display stand, collector's card, and display stand for the collector's card. One side of the package, Red Hood from Detective Comics. This is the 20th figure in the McFarlane Collector's Edition subline. Other side says Red Hood. At the bottom, there's his barcode if that helps anybody. And in the back, here he is, posed up from the original origin story of the Joker. So no further ado, let's open him up. And of course, I did get two of these figures, one of which to open and enjoy, the other one to keep unopened in my complete Batman related unopened action figure collection. And like I said, I did order the bundle from the McFarland Toy Store. Between the 10% off of the Platinum membership, the 10% off of the coupon code, and the bundle discount, got a pretty fair price. There are Platinum Chase variants for each of these figures, and I'm eagerly on the hunt for them. I actually need to get two of each one, so it's going to be quite the task. If anyone has a lead on where I'm able to get one for a reasonable price, please drop me a line in the comments below. Much appreciated. All right. Now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. We have a pickaxe, a knife, a crossbow, display stand, collector's card, and display stand for the collector's card. Before we tailor all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is the Red Hood, later to be the Joker. A lot of people believe his original name was Jack Napier, but that's not 100% certain. Either way, he was a failed comedian, and his life was falling apart. He fell in with some criminals, they decided to do a heist, and they gave him the Red Hood helmet outfit. Now at the time, the Red Hood was a different person that would put on this helmet and do crimes. That way somebody got caught, they would take that person, but the Red Hood could continue on. But of course, the Joker was not really a criminal. Like I said, a failed comedian, his pregnant wife had just passed away, and they still forced him to go through with the crime. They went, I think it was Ace Chemicals, to rob the place. Of course, Batman went to stop them. And they got into a little skirmish. He fell into the vat of chemicals and emerged as the Joker. There have been some different retcons over the years. I believe in the New 52 they made it so Joker was the Red Hood, leading the Red Hood gang. Personally, I'm not as fond of that one as I am the failed comedian that just happened to be down his luck. One bad day, let him be the Joker. This is a very classic, traditional look of the Red Hood, and I appreciate that. It's done on the three Joker's body. So let's take a look. Starting with his head here, or I guess rather his helmet, it's a big red dome. It looks kind of stupid depending on how you look at it. I remember he was like, how do I see through this thing? And there were lenses inside of here. Let's go further down, he's got a black and white suit. White gloves, black jacket, white shirt, black bow tie, maybe a little vest under there. He has his red cape, kind of shiny, has a bendy wire going through the side as well as through the bottom. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. They've used this body to death with Joker figures, and this is the same body they're going to do with the upcoming Batman Forever Michael Go Alfred. And a closer look at his face, helmet, and head sculpt. Shiny paint, did a pretty good job making it look sort of metallic. Helmet, the dome, I like it. Now, check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. Typical McFarland display stand we've seen a million times before. Only difference is this one has a silver DC at the bottom because it's part of the collector's edition. It's thin, it's basic. Here's his collector's card. It's a replica of the cover of Detective Comics number 168, which gave the first origin story of the Joker. We dare you to accept this challenge. Can you guess Batman and Robin, the name of the man? The Red Hood. Batman and Robin. Red Hood, McFarland Clutter's Edition. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. 
and doesn't do much for me, but if you want to display the collector's card next to your figure, you have a stand to do so. And now for his other weapons. Pickaxe, knife, and crossbow. So the pickaxe here looks pretty good. It's got silver on the top, but the handle should be a different color, and so should the wrap. That's a problem with a lot of the McFarland stuff. The sculpts outdo the paint jobs big time. He has a little knife here. It looks like it could be a switchblade. And then we have this crossbow. Once again, all done in silver. I don't think the paint job is really appropriate for the crossbow. Here's the red hood holding that knife. And then holding that crossbow, pointing it right at you. And here he is holding that pickaxe. Now I wanted to check out the differences and reuse between this Red Hood figure and the three Jokers, Criminal Joker. Obviously the head's completely different. As we go further down, it looks like the jacket, the torso underneath, the arms, the hands, the diaper, the legs, and the feet are exactly the same. So these are exactly the same figure besides the head, the cape, and the paint job. And I'll tell you, in my opinion, it works. Here are all the different McFarland figures that utilize that three Joker's body. There are a total of nine of them so far. Once I get the Platinum Red Hood, that'll be ten. And then the Batman Forever Michael Go Alfred will make eleven. The Infinite Frontier Joker uses a similar body, but different legs and diaper area. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, or rather helmet, of course it can rotate side to side. Can't really do much else, I mean it has the tiniest bit of budge there. Shoulders, the ball joint goes about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a bicep cut below that. He does not have the traditional butterfly ring. Actually, you know what? It looks like, yes he does. It's deep inside of there. Double jointed elbows. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged. The torso is pretty much one solid piece. If there's any articulation under there, it's pretty much useless. Ball joint the waist. Rotate around. Forward and back. Legs. They go out about this far. McFarland style hip joints. Rotation. It's minimum, but there. Legs go forward about that much. Back not at all. Double jointed knees. And then his ankle, forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, toe articulation. Now switch to a factory type setting. This is Ace Chemicals. You can see old school Batman trying to catch Red Hood on top of the landing. A closer look at Batman approaching the Red Hood. Red Hood is scared, backing away. Of course, he falls off the landing. Batman crouches down, tries to save him. Red Hood keeps falling lower, Batman reaching over, offering him a hand, and then this monumental moment, the Red Hood falls into the vat of green chemicals. Batman thinks he's dead. Little does he know, he emerges on the other side as the Joker. You know what they say, all it takes is one bad day. Now let's check him out, next to some other action figures, starting off with some other Red Hood figures. Here he is, next to a couple of DC Direct Red Hood figures. On the left, we have the Unmasked series. On the right, the Arkham Origins. Here he is, next to another DC Direct Red Hood. I believe this guy is supposed to be the Joker as the leader of the Red Hood gang from the New 52. I'm personally not exactly a fan of this Red Hood look. I like the original version without the chin sticking out a lot better. But in my actual fair world, I use this guy as just the leader of the Red Hood gang. The Red Hood gang is an active gang in Gotham City has nothing to do with the Joker or Jason Todd in any way. Here's this Joker as Red Hood, next to all the McFarlane, Jason Todd as Red Hood figures. And here he is, with all of my different Jason Todd as Red Hood figures. Here's this Red Hood, next to the McFarlane, Detective Comics 27 First Appearance Batman. It looks very similar to the Cape Crusader Batman from the new animated show, and I think it looks great fighting the Red Hood. So here's the McFarlane Collector's Edition Wave 1. Every single Collector's Edition figure has a Platinum Chase variant. Here are both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of the first appearance Superman, the Abyss, and Alan Scott Green Lantern. And here is the second wave of Collector's Edition figures. Both regular and Platinum versions of Firestorm, Hawkman, and Sinestro. Then the third wave of Collector's Edition figures. 
we have the Death and Return of Superman, Captain Carrot, Batman as Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman. Here's the fourth wave. This wave consisted of Penguin, Starfire, and Captain Boomerang. And here's the fifth wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures. Both the regular and Planet Chase variants of Sergeant Rock, Connor Kent Superboy, and Manga Batman. Then, here's the sixth wave of Collector's Edition figures. This wave consists of Ragman, Clock King, and Red Hood. There are Platinum Chase variants of each of these figures, and I'm on the hunt for them. Anyone has a lead? Let me know. Now the next wave after this is going to be Dark Knight Returns Batman, Huntress, and a Green Lantern Army Builder. Also, really looking forward to that wave. Now let's check him out. Next to some other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is. Next to the Superman Centennial Park Tribute statue figure. Here's the Red Hood. Next to the DC Classics Dark Side Mega Figure. And here he is. Next to the most recent Platinum Wave, Sportsmaster, Manhunter, and the New 52 Reverse Flash. Then, with the second Digital Wave, Green Arrow, Superman, and the Atom. And now, with the DC Rebirth Tim Drake Robin, and both the Platinum and regular versions of the Cyborg Superman. Here's Red Hood. Next to the Target exclusive, Jim Gordon and his rookie suit mega figure versus Mr. Bloom 2 pack. And here he is, next to the Target exclusive, Metallo and Fire. Then, with the Nightfall, Batman vs. Bane 2 pack. And now, with the Dark Knight trilogy, Morgan Freeman, Lucius Fox. And finally, next to the Joker and Punchline 2 pack. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style wise. In case you don't know what signs you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all 7 inch scale. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures and some Diamond Select toys, here's Red Hood next to a chicken pot pie. And here he is, next to some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH Figure Arts and Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a really fun Red Hood figure. Now the body has been used time and time again, and it's a little bit dated. The left hand, the open one, kind of bothers me. The hand articulation, it's a little bit limited. The torso articulation is non-existent, but you don't really need anything under there. Even with all the reuse, I'm really enjoying this figure. His accessories, honestly, I think they're kind of dumb. The knife, the pickaxe, don't really need those things for Red Hood. I think the pickaxe is from the New 52, but that's not what this figure's from, so why would they include it with him? Sculpt and paint job, excellent. Articulation, it's a little bit limited, but pretty good. Cloth soft goods, cape is nice. The head, paint job, shiny metallic, I like it. Even with all the reuse, I'm enjoying the hell out of this guy, and it really doesn't bother me very much. I want to rate this guy an 8 out of 10. Maybe I'm overshooting it, but it's just a lot of fun. Had fun doing the review, enjoying the figure. He looks great. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.